Good morning. I'm Jody Gray Krivda, and this is my daughter Allison Krivda, and we welcome you to worship. Thank you for joining us today at First Presbyterian Church on Hilton Head. Welcome to longtime members, welcome to children, youth, and families, and we welcome visitors here from the Low Country and visitors around the world. And on this Mother's Day, a special welcome to mothers, aunts, grandmothers, mothers to be, mother figures, and all of those who have provided nurture and support to us throughout our lives. We thank God for you. We hope all will experience the joy and hope of the risen Christ in the season of Eastertide through our worship today. Let us join our hearts to worship God as we hear these words from Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Into your hand, I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. These words remind us that we worship a God who is worthy of our praise. Let us proclaim our praise as we sing together, How Great Thou Art. This is LaVon Stevens, one of the music directors here at First Presbyterian Church here in Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Now let us offer up our praises to God. Join in with this song of praise as we claim the awesome and mighty God that we serve. I'm excited. I hope you will join in and sing along with us this popular tune of the church, How Great Thou Art.
And now, let us prepare our hearts to hear our children's message from our children's choir director, Beth Green. Hello, hello. Happy Sunday. Happy Mother's Day. Good morning, friends. Good morning, children. I'm so happy to see you in my imagination station. Until we can be, be together again, we're going to meet just like this. Because God says where two or more are gathered, Jesus is right there. So I'm one and you're two. And hi, two or more are gathered. How about that? That's cool. So happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Children, did you know that God told us in the Ten Commandments to honor thy mother and father? And not just on Mother's Day, but every day. Now, honor is a pretty important word. In this case, it means obey and respect. And I know you're doing that already because you are awesome. So not just today, but every day. Honor thy mother and father. Do what they tell you to do respect them, listen to them, and you'll be doing what God wants us to do, right? Honor thy mother and father. Mommy, mommy, love you in the morning, love you at the noontime. Mommy, mommy, love you when the sun goes down, down. Love you when the sun goes down, down. Love you when the sun goes down. Happy Mother's Day. I thank God for Beth Green and for her message to the children and to us about the gift of mothers and surrogate mothers in our lives. Right before her message, we sang about the gift of all gifts, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We sang these words. When I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Believing that truth about our Lord and Savior, let us confess our sins to God and to one another in the words of the prayer of confession that you will see on the screen. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy God, in this season, we praise you that the light of your word breaks forth like the dawn. Living in this light, we see the ways that we have failed to live with the words of Jesus as the cornerstone of our life. We are comforted by your compassion toward your people in every age. And yet we recognize that our gratitude is imperfect and incomplete. Forgive our failings, heal what we have broken, nurture what we have neglected, that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may seek to build the church upon Christ with a foundation of love. Amen. Hear the good news. Good news proclaimed by the prophet Zechariah. Words that are inscribed right behind me in the entrance to our sanctuary. They read, They shall look on him whom they have pierced. On that day, a fountain shall be opened for the cleansing of the people. Friends, hear this good news. In Jesus Christ our Lord, we are cleansed and forgiven. Alleluia. Let us sing the power of Jesus' name.
book of first Peter begins with these words blessed be God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ by his great mercy he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead we are in the season of Easter time a season where we celebrate the new birth into a living hope a new hope we have through the resurrection of Jesus Christ a living hope that we have through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and it is through this lens that we hear these words from 1st Peter chapter 2 come to him a living stone though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight and like living stones let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ for it stands in Scripture see I am laying in Zion a stone a cornerstone chosen and precious and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame then to you who believe he is precious but for those who do not believe that stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall they stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do but you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation God's own people in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light join me in prayer almighty God we have been called out of darkness into that marvelous light and we celebrate that marvelous light in this season of Easter tide Lord be with us as we hear your word may your Holy Spirit infuse these words with your love and your grace and your power so that we may live with Jesus Christ as the cornerstone of our very lives in Christ's name we pray amen last week in worship we were gathered around the sea of galilee with peter and the other disciples as they plied their trade as fishermen will shared with us these words of discipleship to which jesus called peter feed my lambs tend my sheep feed my sheep in response to the question do you love me this week we skip ahead 30 maybe 50 years where we hear Peter or one of his close associates reflecting on the outcome of that call to discipleship the formation of a new identity with Christ as the cornerstone this is a new identity that is personal to each follower of Christ an identity that reflects being called out of darkness into that marvelous light and it is a communal identity those who follow christ become a royal priesthood and a holy nation around the time that first peter was being written the Colosseum in rome was being built i remember the first time i went to rome and saw the Colosseum. walking through it i was amazed that a building this old was still there Yes, some of the tops and sides have fallen in over the last 2,000 years, but the foundation is still standing. Builders of that era knew that the key to a long-standing building was the foundation, particularly the cornerstone. The cornerstone is the first stone that is set in the construction of a building. All of the other stones are set in reference to that cornerstone. One of my guilty pleasures during this stay at home time has been watching the TV show Extreme Homes. Each episode features a half a dozen or so homes perched in crazy locations or shaped like snakes or eggs 
or with cool features like walls made out of plants or indoor streams and pools. My favorite ones are the tree houses, maybe a throwback to my love of Swiss Family Robinson as a kid, but I am amazed that they can place these multi-room homes in the branches of trees. The one thing that all these extreme homes have in common is a solid foundation. In fact, in each episode, they spend a good amount of time talking about how the foundation was poured, how deep the steel posts are to support the building. Something that can't be seen when you are looking at the house, but is so important. Because without that foundation, that house is going to careen off the cliff or fall out of the tree as soon as there is a big storm. A solid foundation. A solid foundation is so important. The Apostle Peter found himself writing to the communities in Asia Minor, sharing with them the importance of this solid foundation. These churches were scattered physically from the center of religious life in Jerusalem. The people were scattered, living intermixed with those who did not follow Jesus or even know who Jesus was. The political winds were complicated with duties and obligations to emperors and governors, and yet in allegiance to a higher authority in God. Peter is writing to give the people encouragement don't give up. Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. You have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light. You have been called from fear into hope. You have been called from sorrow into joy. You have been called from hoarding your resources to sharing your blessings. You have been called to love your enemy. You have been called to love your neighbor, even the neighbor you think has got it all wrong. This is a tough call for the people of Peter's time, and it is a tough call for each one of us. So Peter reminds the people that their own faith and the collective faith of the church is built on a cornerstone that will not fall. A cornerstone that forms a foundation that will withstand powerful hurricane force winds that can knock down trees. And it can withstand invading viruses that are too small to see with the naked eye. The cornerstone is none other than Jesus Christ. Peter uses concrete language that his communities will understand. The cornerstone, that most important piece of the building is the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not only will people understand the architectural metaphor, but they will also remember that Jesus referred to himself as the cornerstone. In fact, the cornerstone that was rejected. The communities will remember the story of Jesus entering Jerusalem the week before he died. We heard that triumphal entry just five weeks ago on Palm Sunday. After Jesus entered Jerusalem and challenged the money changers at the temple, he is confronted by religious authorities about his leadership. He shares two parables and ends with these words that we heard from Matthew 21. Jesus said to them, have you never read in the scriptures? The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. Jesus was foreshadowing his rejection by the crowds and his death on the cross and he was foreshadowing his resurrection on the third day, 
that he will be the risen Christ. And it is the risen Christ who will be the cornerstone, the foundation of the church. The communities to whom Peter were writing may also have remembered that Jesus was quoting from the Psalms, from Psalm 118. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. The cornerstone is what the rest of the building is dependent on. The size, the shape, the very identity of the building is shaped by the cornerstone. So for each of us and for us as a church, the question is how are we shaped? What is our identity? What does it mean to say that our foundation is the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ? Or as we will sing in a moment, that in Christ alone my hope is found. It means that we look to the life of Jesus, his humble birth, his calling of ordinary people to be his disciples and followers, his teachings, his healings, his inviting of those on the margins to have a seat at the table, his obedience to his father's plan. It means that we look to Jesus' death on the cross, a sacrificial death born of love, a sacrificial death born so that our sins would be forgiven. My sins, your sins, the sins of humanity. A sacrificial death that means we die no more and we have life eternal. And we look to the resurrection. In this season of Easter time, we remember that Jesus has given us a new birth into a living hope through his resurrection. And we can encounter this risen Christ, this living hope in our own lives, as Mary did on, at the empty tomb on that Easter morning as Cleopas did on the road to Emmaus, as Thomas did in a locked up house, as Peter did on the shores of Lake Galilee. The risen Christ is with us. The risen Christ is the cornerstone of our faith. Let us live as people who believe these words. The risen Christ is our cornerstone. Let us pray. Almighty God, we stand with Christ as the cornerstone, as the foundation of our lives. As we will join our hearts together singing, in Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, through the fiercest drought and storm, here in the love of Christ I stand. Lord, these lyrics of this song remind us that it is in Christ alone, in our world where we are buffeted by so many winds and so many forces, we stand on the solid foundation of Christ our Lord. Amen.
Spirit's timing is perfect. In the same week that I was asked to share the prayers of the people, my small group was studying prayer. Shout out to the Sunday Sisters. One of our wise members shared these wise words from Henry Nowen. Prayer creates that openness in which God is given to us. Indeed, God wants to be admitted to the human heart, to be received with open hands, 
and loved with the same love with which we have been created. With open hearts, let us turn to our God in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, you know our hearts and you love us anyway. Grant us the faith to allow our failings to be held in your all-embracing arms. Help us to trust your power to make us living witnesses to your love. On this Mother's Day, we give thanks for the women who gave us life, who reared us, who by example or by instruction instilled within us their enduring values and parental wisdom that has helped us live in this complicated world. May our hearts overflow with gratitude for their sacrifices and devotion, not just this day, but every day. Be their strength and comfort when they need support. Thank you too for relatives, friends, and all who have fulfilled a nurturing role, supplementing or standing in when a mother was needed. Help us to let them know what a difference they have made in our lives. We also recognize that Mother's Day can be difficult and painful for those who have recently lost a mother, have a difficult relationship with their mother, or would like to be a mother, but their lives have taken a different path. Wrap your loving arms around them and remind them that we are all children of God. We lift up prayers for anyone feeling empty today. Encourage and empower them to reach out to share their nurturing gifts with others in need. Loving God, we come to you full of uncertainty about what may happen in the coming days and weeks. Shower us with the peace that Jesus promised to his disciples and give us strength to support those around us. In this time of pandemic, wake us up to the reminder that we are not alone. Remind us that you are in the world, not above or beyond it. The heart that was broken on the cross still feels every human woe. Replace our anxiety with hope and encouragement so that secure in our faith, we can serve you. Even as we are asked to keep our distance from others, help us to find ways to reach out to those who need our support. We pray especially for those whose incomes and livelihoods are threatened, for the children who will miss meals usually provided at school, for those most vulnerable to infection, for those already isolated, lonely, and scared. Loving God, give them your peace and through our hands ensure that they have what they need. Sustain and strengthen and protect all caregivers Bless them as they offer compassionate care and show selfless courage in the face of risk. Guide the thoughts and hands of scientists and researchers as they search for treatments and vaccines that will bring the pandemic to an end. Grant wisdom and strength to those in positions of authority. Fill them with the love of truth and make their decisions fair and just. Holy Spirit, we pray that where you find the doors of human hearts still closed before you, that you will knock louder and in your own secret way shape human will so that your will is done. All these things we ask in that name above every name, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I thank God for Jane and for her prayer that reminds us of the power of prayer, especially at times like this. 
It is in that spirit of prayer that I add my welcome to that of Jody and Allison at the beginning of today's worship service on this Mother's Day. Even though our church facility is closed at this time because of the pandemic, we are still very much living the Lord's love. Our church is not closed, even though our facility is. And we'd like to invite you to join us in living our Lord's love. You can learn more about how you can do that by going to our website, fpchhi.org, or by giving the church a call. On our website is today's bulletin. And what I'm about to say, you can read more about it in today's bulletin. First, I'd like to emphasize our emails. In our emails each day that we are sending, there are devotionals and information and updates. What we pray is spiritual energy and spiritual oxygen for you at this time when we need it most. We also still have classes for children and youth and adults. And these classes are so crucial, again, especially at a time like this. And then we have opportunities to live the Lord's love in service. That is one of our values here at First Presbyterian Church, sacrificial service. You can do that by making masks. I have one of those masks that we have made here at the church. We have a number of members who are making them. You can add to that number if you like, or you can bring material. There's a bin right down here to my left where you can place material for them to make these masks. They have made more than 600 of them for places like them, volunteers in medicine right here on the island and for other retirement communities that have asked for them. If you'd also like a mask for yourself, we will give one to you. So again, contact the church uh, or go on our website and you can learn how we can get those masks to you. You will also see to my left this blue bin. And in this blue bin, we are placing canned goods and other items that our food pantries and soup kitchens need. Again, you can read more about this in today's bulletin. We're also grateful on this Mother's Day for your giving. Because of your giving to this church, we are able to give to the Presbyterian communities of South Carolina. There are six retirement communities in our state, and some of those senior residents of those communities need financial assistance to be able to live there. So we, along with other churches, provide that assistance. So we're so grateful to you for that assistance. Indeed, we are so very grateful for your tithes and pledges and offerings that are allowing us to be the church and to live the Lord's love at this time. You will see here on the screen ways that you can give. If you were able to give more, that would be such a blessing to us at this time. And we would be so appreciative and be good stewards of that. At the same time, if you are especially hurting economically at this time, we are here for you. We mean that, as I said last week. Give the church a call and we will do our best to provide for you, to help you at this time. We are indeed grateful for the Lord's blessings in our lives. In a moment, we will sing these words. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices, who wondrous things hath done in whom this world rejoices. Let us join our hearts in singing our gratitude to our God.
Christ is our cornerstone. Christ is the foundation of our life, of our faith, personal and communal. Gathered as we are, scattered as we are, Christ is our cornerstone. Let us live with the risen Christ at the center of our lives and let us share the love and peace of that risen Christ with all we encounter. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.